What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 6 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Archeon the Ever Chosen campaign. So as we saw last time, Archeon was not the only legendary lord to play around as Colex Sun Eater and Azazel uh, both had their time, maybe not quite in the sun as they both played second fiddle uh, to Archeon and to Gilator, but at least uh, they got to play. Uh, we'll be expecting to see a lot more from them as we go forward and it's nice to have uh, uh, legendary lords early in in well high numbers at least or higher numbers uh, in their relative early portion of the campaign anyway we had a big battle against the orcs at black fang and are continuing to move southward to destroy their faction as best we can still haven't encountered grimgore but i'm hopeful uh, that we somehow will we also have a little mission here a razor sack blood peak and four turns can we make it there in four turns well let's just hope that we can maybe we should send kukar this way hmm one, two, no, actually he won't make it there. Ah. <laughs> well, we'll still get the bonus money, just not the uh, extra bonus money, I guess, uh, from uh, completing the mission. Anyway, uh, in terms of what we got to do this turn, Zazel and Gulator, you both have to move, and I do believe... Yeah, so Norden is here, and it has one, two, three... Hmm, not a crazy amount of units. I'm almost tempted to send Gulator to Pack Ice Bay, and send Azazel to Norden, because we see that there's nobody defending Norden, but we don't know what the heck's going on over here. Could be a full stack. And I think in that light, what we'll do is this. You go to Gulator and take his regular Chaos spawn. And Gulator, in the meantime, you are going to get... Um, Nothing. You know what? Maybe we'll get you the Bilious Thunder Guff. Not right now, because it's ludicrously expensive, but for now. We'll probably transfer that to Festus, but it'll be a decent bit of a while until we uh, until we get him on the field. And Gulator, you can move that in March stance. Ooh, what if there's a full stack here, though? The problem is, what's the likelihood that we can reach in a single... Well, <laughs> it's close. I can't quite tell. We No, we can't by the looks of it. We'll be just short, so we have to risk the march stance. All right, Galatoria, you're risking the march stance then, but as long as you stay in the Sea of Claws that is controlled, you can go there. And then Azazel, I would like you to summon two more Marauders and then go to Norden. You should, in theory, be able to take it yourself. It'll be a little bit of a tough fight, but uh, another nice little uh, smaller bet. Oh! And Wolfric the Wanderer is here, and he's in range. Oh! Oh, Gulator, you've got a fight on your hands. Uh, somewhat likely what's about to happen is Haka will move out of Pack Ice Bay, hit Gulator while he's in full speed stance, and Wolfric will hit him as well. On the other hand, if Gulator manages to pull it off, though the mammoths are going to be difficult, uh, if he manages to pull it off, then he'll be able to take back Ice Bay with basically no interruption, so uh, that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And then he can loop around and take those dark fortresses that we want. All right, well, we've uh, we've done it now. Let's see if they attack, and I guess we're ready to end the turn. All right, ooh, wait. Actually, does this serve any purpose to us? It's collecting 50 money. Hmm. I wonder how much the orcs would give to us for this. Wait, this is part of... Oh, it's actually part of... Huh. Wait. I have a thought. Uh, first of all, orcs. Dieter's Elfen. 3.9k. It's not horrible. We could very well give it to the orcs. On the other hand, wait, you are also willing to, actually you're willing to give us less because that's all the money you have. You're also, however, in a defensive alliance with the Reichland. Uh, here's what I want to say. Trade agreement. No, 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 I don't want to, no, I don't want trade agreement. I want you to break non-aggression pact with Arguilon and Middenland and Ice Court. I want you to break military access with the Reichland Kuran and Ice Court. And, ah, uh, you don't want to do that. Okay, fine. Uh, just Reichland and Kuran. What about just Reichland? All right, break it with Reichland. Break def break trade agreement with Reichland, Midland, and Kuran. Yes. Break defensive alliance with Reichland. 
and still able to give us a little bit of money. Oh, is there anything else that we could force them to break? This is actually not so bad. Uh, we might be able to force some chaos into the Empire by sort of tempting Balthazar Gilt with some uh, dark secrets, and you know, out of all the out of all the Empire Lords, let's face it, Balthazar Gilt would be uh, the most tempted. Uh, let's see. What about Kuhan here? No, they don't want to do that. All right, what about Ice Court? Not quite, but we can reduce the money. Oh, wow, that's actually fairly considerable. All right, fine, fine, fine. You don't want to break your military access packs, and don't. Not all your military access packs. I was just wondering if we could actually get him to do anything else. I guess Festus won't like this, but I do like this, so we're going to do it. Here, enjoy Dieter's health, and we're going to take it away from you eventually anyway. And this completely screws your relationship with everybody around you, Geld. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's a little bit obnoxious, but I kind of like it. All right. Uh, Zinch is upon us this day. Anyway, and with that, we can end the turn and see if Gulator survives. And while the turn is... Vashnar, what you want? No, we need to vassalize you. Uh, while the turn is ending, once again, we have managed to reach the uh, engagement threshold. And thus, this episode will, of course, uh, be an hour long as promised. And the offer does stand 400 likes and 50 comments. And the next episode will be that hour as well. I see Haka wants to actually avoid fighting Gulator. And I don't know where Wolfric went. Huh. Who's he at war with, incidentally? I, oh, why? Oh, okay, he's at war with our vassals. And... Hagrif, Nagarond, Reikland, Disciples of Hushet are our vassals. Okie dokie. Kind of too bad, I was actually hoping that he'd attack Gulator, but... Well, he didn't want to, he didn't want to. Uh, Gulator head to Pekka's Bay, if you would. I'm really curious where he went, though. The annoying aspect... Ooh, islands. Uh, the annoying aspect of that is we kind of have to... Oh, right, Pakai's Bay is a broken territory. We can't land in it, damn it. <laughs> I always forget, I feel like this freaking Pakai's Bay gets me in every single... Uh, in every single campaign, I swear. Uh, well, that's a waste of your turn, Gulator. Can you actually land? In March, stands, but please try to land, buddy. Okay, at least he could land. Hawk is not going to attack him. He's probably just going to either return to Pack Ice Bay or just straight up run away. And Azazel. All right, let's hope that uh, Norden at least is not broken. Ooh, another island. Uh, go here to near Norden. And then land. All right, you can. Pyrrhic victory. Oh. Mm. Is this worth fighting? I don't know. Uh, for now, take this. And actually, no. Put this... Uh, Put this on the uh, on the chaos spawn. Uh, I was wondering whether we should raise a few more marauders here. Oh, well, we can raise spawn of Nurgle here and forsaken a Nurgle and marauders of Nurgle. You have got to be kidding me! It's because we're in Festus's territory. Ah, uh, that's quite interesting and quite useful for Gulator, although. He has so many regular Forsaken at this point that it's not super useful, with the possible exception of the Chaos Spawn of Nurgle. Hmm. And maybe a single Forsaken, although at 2,000 gold, it's really quite expensive. It's more expensive, in fact, than the uh, than the regular Spawn. Alright, you know what? I'll think about that. Let's just, let's just give this a second. Uh, Archaeon and Kolek. Let's get you moving. March stance over here, I guess you're going to fire mouth, close as you can get. I would like Kolek to follow along. And, ah, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna send Kolek most likely to travel with Kuhar for a little while. We could probably give them both, like, half an army each. And then do that sort of thing. Kuhar... I mean, I guess you could go up this way. I need you to actually trade some units, though. Which is something of an issue. He actually be a lot closer to Arcan here. You know what? I think he's going to follow Arcan directly since he was on that path already. And then we will send you this way, I think. All right, something like that. Chronicler, you really got to join Arcan's army. You really got to catch up to him. All righty, and I thought I moved you. Okay, I did. Arcan is good. Everybody's good. Let's double check Diplo, though I doubt that anybody wants to uh, become our vassal right now. Grimgore really wants peace and is willing to give us 6k for it, which would be nice considering we're bleeding cash. But, uh, well, that's the nature of playing Chaos in the early game if you want a ton of armies. Anyway, Azazel... Get that spawn on Urgle. I think we will avoid taking the rest. Actually, 
Maybe one Forsaken? 2,000 gold? I don't really want to spend 2,000 gold. I was thinking trade this Marauder for that Forsaken, because this guy has room for another spawn. They will be mine. 2,000 gold. You know what? Don't spend it on the spawn. Let, uh, let's just allow that Marauder to switch to this. And then you don't need a stance, and you're saving your points, so you're just going to... Mm. Maybe just auto resolve it. Hey, we got a Talisman of Endurance. So Zazel, you can keep that. I think there was a comment specifically to give him the Talisman of Endurance. Uh, we will like play this, and we'll see if we can get a nice trade for it. In fact, maybe trade it to Festus temporarily, even though we're probably going to attack him. Uh, yeah, just collect that income for now. Hopefully he's rich enough to give us a little bit of cash. Alrighty. Anything else we need to do this turn does not look like it. Let's end the turn and let's continue looking for Grimgor. I'd also like to see what happens with Gulator, although I doubt there's anybody in range of him. Especially since Wolfric went who knows where. Yeah, and we can name some of uh, Gulator's Duggos while we're at it. We got some names right here. And Throggy. You want us to join War No? Oh, he lost his army. I think. Huh, interesting. I assume that he still refused. Yeah, he did lose his army immediately after taking Kislev by the looks of it. Oh, at least he did take Kislev. Counter offer. Minus 206. Yeah, we're gonna break our agreements with you sooner rather than later. And I I, I think I just saw Mr. Wolfric. Is he going to ultra the Grimson Harvest? Hmm, maybe. Uh, Path to the East is going to rebel. I can't say I like that very much. We're going to uncollect the income then. And, oh, yeah, well, that's... I can see why that was happening. And Dangerous Winds. I uh, guess we'll keep Exploit Vassals. We are gaining positive amounts. But I want to see if you will take Ice Spewer here. Ice Spewer? Give us one money. <laughs> okay, Astrogoth. Yeah, but you can have it just to be a little bit stronger. Hopefully. Better than nothing. Overseer's Camp Outpost. Okay, yeah, that's not what we want, but you can't do anything about that. Archaeon, you are basically at the edge of your range with Firemouth, but if we have Colec take it, you can go right past it and still head to Blood Peak right after. And then, by moving back, meet up with Kukar. Which might not be the worst idea in the world. Alrighty, so you, sir. Oh, never mind, that plan doesn't work because you can't reach Firemouth. Alright, so Archaeon, you're gonna have to do it yourself. There's a lot of that going around. Have an Archaeon do things himself, I mean. Alright, Firemouth, what do we have here? Oh, well, it's not a bad little stick. It's not a bad little stick. And it does have the Goblin Watchtower, though it is going to be a very similar battle to the one we just fought. Hmm. Uh, Kukar, you can also move down here. Can't quite reach where we need you. And Chronicler, keep moving around. I guess we're going to fight this nonetheless. But I want to move everybody before we do. Gilator. I guess you're going to pack Ice Space since Wolfric can't here no more. And, well, I would like you to go there. You can't reach it right now, so you're going to raid for a turn. Keep us... Well, okay. In the money is probably a too strong of a, uh, a word or phrase, but anyway. Uh, there's a sea corpse here. I think maybe Azazel stay here and heal for a turn. Maybe then summon a couple of marauders and hit the sea corpse. I think, like, 90% sure that sea corpses have battles in them. So, and we will have to fight whatever... Uh, Whatever vampire it spawned there. Yeah, decisive victory and low casualties. And oh, we should also upgrade the Marauder horses. You know what? We should actually upgrade them before the battle despite the cost because they can gain XP this way. Marauder horse masters, please. The upgrade is cheap, but the upkeep is not so much. There we go. Now. Oh, the war banner would actually be useful to them. Do we fight this? I think we still fight this, even though it's very similar to the battle we just fought. It should be fun enough. Go. Yeah. 
Alrighty, here we go, and it is not, in fact, the same map that we fought the orcs in at uh, Black Fang last episode, but a different map altogether, which works, which works, and it gives us two choke points to fight through at the same time, so I'm going to most definitely enjoy this. Anyway, we've deployed our army into two separate little blobs. One will be led by Harald Hammerstorm, and we will send the Swords of Chaos to watch over him and back him up while Archaon and Ograx lead the other side towards the uh, towards the main capture point that has at least one big old tier 4 catapult tower. Anyway, Archaon and Ograx have made their way into the fray. The enemy trolls will have to face off against uh, the armored chaos trolls instead. And we should definitely have the advantage there, even if Archaon and Ograx weren't ripping the trolls apart. Speaking of the trolls, they're down to about half HP and will fall quite quickly at this rate, I imagine, especially with one of our giants moving in. And the aspiring champions moving in to help out as well. Nice job, Archaon. Just took out another troll and will turn towards the enemy orcs who try to stand against him. I'm really, really hoping we can fight Grimgor, though. A, just in principle, and B, for his defeat trade. I mean, I suppose even if we don't, his faction will revive, so we'll be able to get a fight with Grimgor eventually. It's just that the problem is, once he revives, uh, Archaon will probably be far too far away to fight him. So I want to fight him now. For lore reasons. Anyway, Archaon and Ograx continue working on the pile of orc boys that are around him, and Harold is moving in as well. Looks like his blob has gotten rid of the first unit of orc boar boys, and the second one will be following suit shortly. Looks like quite a few debuffs Sundered Armor and Bone Crusher and Searing Flames, bringing them down to only 30 armor, which is quite nice. In the meantime, Archaon is a Kasten. He got a burning head through the enemy ranks, though it just did bounce a little bit through our own troops. They're so heavily armored that they didn't really care all that much. Arcan followed that up with a Searing Doom and continues laying in to the orcs, boar, and regular orc boys alike. Now our trolls have also sort of separated from Archaon's blob, but fortunately we have Ograx to keep an eye on them. And he should do so fairly decently. It would be nice if we could get some Beastmen allies. And have some of their units. Ogrex would appreciate that. Anyway, how are we doing here? Orc Biggins and Trolls are still fighting. And Harald has nearly made his way through uh, those forces that are uh, preventing him from moving. And he does have this, uh, the Swords of Chaos and the Knights of Zinch here after all. Also, I'm really enjoying the giants in this particular camp, and I'm very, I've been very happy with the chaos giants, much more so uh, than with the, uh, uh, than with the savage giants than the that the orcs have, and I'm not entirely sure why. But the auto resolve doesn't seem to hate these giants nearly as much as it hates the savage giants, which is kind of interesting considering their stats are quite similar to each other. Hmm. So I wonder what the deal is. Maybe it's a holdover from the original game? I don't know. Anyway, anyway, continuing um, through those crowds of orc boys. In fact, it looks like our trolls have made it through to the edge of the crowd. Archaon is still killing things, but, well, Archaon is always killing things. And the balance of power has shifted to about 90% in our favor. I should have probably tried to capture this a little bit earlier by moving the rest of our forces there, but it'll happen eventually. Uh, had all this done clear the enemies out here and we'll move towards this barricade. Kolek has also arrived on the field just to kill off a few enemy uh, boar boys here that were chasing some of our marauder horse masters around. Oh wow, I just got stomped to death. Kolek didn't even get to swing his star crusher. Come on now. Just wanted to let him get a few, uh, or watch him get a few hits in there. Anyway, those boar boys are out. We have a couple other units of Marauder Horse Masters running around and annoying the enemy, but it looks like annoying the enemy won't be needed much further as the enemy is nearly done for. Alright, keep on moving forward, everybody. 
and surround those orc boys, but at the same time capture this location to get that damn tower. And gone, it is actually her tower uh, hell cannon a little bit, which has dropped down to about half HP. Looks like the barricade is down and the Knights of Zine sure through. And one of the Swords of Chaos will actually take the lead while Harald gets blocked by everybody while being in the middle of that blob. But I guess that's his problem. And the point has been captured. The bounce power is 90, maybe 95% in our favor. And I think the last of the units just need to be charged. And Archeon will lead. And oh my, somebody has somebody sent somebody flying. There we go. I'm very much enjoying the... Uh, uh, the Chaos Trolls as well, or specifically the Armored Chaos Trolls. I like their models because of all the uh, craziness going on on their back. All those little trophy racks that they have. They're very, uh, very nicely spottable and uh, much more easy to pick out from the crowd than uh, the regular trolls are, which, while taller than regular infantry, do tend to blend in a little bit more. Anyway, decisive victory for us, no problem at all. We got a nice uh, little fight as we went through both of those choke points. Well, alright, very nice indeed. Certainly not the battle I was expecting, but I was pleasantly surprised fighting through those choke points. Uh, it was quite fun. Archaon, nearly 80,000 damage on him. Looks like the giants and the trolls both uh, uh, cleaned house, all getting over... 100 kills. The Knights of Zinj continue to do very, very well uh, with a 19k uh, damage and 162 kills, beating everybody's save, of course, for Archaon here. Uh, Harry had a little bit of trouble being blocked by all the enemy or by all of our own infantry there, so. Uh, <laughs> look at that. You can't quite see Dorgar on the map here. It almost looks like Archaon is using, uh, uh, is using uh, Kolek as his mount instead, which uh, Nikari or Slashy Giggles is. Side, uh, would be quite entertaining uh, but anyway anyway uh, yeah looks like fairly decent uh, job on the monstrous units Kolek should at least be proud of those and I guess that the extra units the 40 compared to the 12 on the Chaos Knights of Zinch rather than the Swords of Chaos is really counting for them getting lots and lots of kills anyway we're gonna occupy the place and it has furs so this one we'll actually most likely keep and Curse Icon, a free Zealot for Prince Ogrex. I have to wonder whether that actually works for the hero rather than the lord, but I'm sure that Arcan's going to get nothing, well, all the banners in the world. Actually, just out of curiosity, 4366. Six. Let's see. Get the Zealot. 4313. Okay, so it saves us 50 gold, but it looks like that does mean that the heroes can't carry it as it seems to have uh, no effect. Yeah, okay. Uh, fair enough. A lot of things are like that, so I'm not surprised. Anyway, Ograx, you have leveled up. We should probably get Phil the Chalice. It does buff him, but also that fire resistance is now helpful, especially since we have the... Uh, uh, we have the... What was it called? Dead Slayer buff that enables flaming attacks for the entire army from Harry. Next up... I guess we'll get Armageddon just to keep powering Harry up and then Perfect Vigor. Might as well go through his unique tree and then uh, follow up with something else. We can also get the Aura of Chaos on all of them, giving them that uh, leadership reduction stacking, which ain't too bad. And I'm still undecided between Chaos Strategist and Chaos Commander. With three Lord and Heroes, as in Archeon, Harry, and Ogrex, we could have 100% uptime on Stand or Die. Which is effectively a plus 15 melee defense and attack buff for everybody in a Death Star. Hmm. Which isn't horrible. It's certainly not horrible. And I'll have to think about that. On the other hand, Chaos Strategist would allow us to heal a little bit better, which uh, would also be very, very nice, but anyway. Uh, Kolek, you're gonna run up ahead a little bit of Archeon. Kukar, you can't quite reach him, um, but that's alright. Uh, we get armor for Marauder Infantry out of the Cultist Camp. Ooh. I think one of the only ones that I want to build immediately, because we're still using a lot of Marauders, we're not using enough Chaos Warriors to justify building uh, uh, building armor for them via whatever thing uh, the iron iron gives them armor 
Go figure. But you have furs. I'm gonna keep attention to furs or pay attention to furs and keep an eye out for another one. There was one at Dieter's Hafen, but uh, because of the port, we couldn't use it. Alas. Uh, Ultra of the Crimson Harvest. Let's go for a Chaos Fort up here. Oh, what's the likelihood you attack the Ultra of the Crimson Harvest? Hmm. Well, we got four units of Chaos Warriors plus snow walls? Yes, walls. Oh, okay, then they're, they're fine. They're fine. It is a dark fortress, so it has walls, so we're fine. I do want to check our potential for rebellions. Although there is potential for farming rebellions as well, which we should pay attention to. And there's a lot of these money-making buildings that we need to upgrade, but they're real expensive right now, and alas, and we cannot afford them. Otherwise, I believe we're good to go for the next turn once more, so skip, 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 skip. Uh, looks like our warband upgrades for chosen will be completed yes. although we can't afford them right now so we're going to have to hold off on that anyway but more importantly this heads us deeper into the nurgle tree non-aggression of the dredge no dredge i love you but alas well i don't love you as much as zatan but uh we are going to have to uh vassalize you so unless you're willing to do that via diplomacy and depending on how many of the dark fortresses of the dark lands you have, we're probably going to have to do that the hard way. And double checking now. Servants of the Conclave still don't want to be our vassals. And we'll see about that. And ooh, caravan. Now we can't reach it though, can we? Hmm. One turn. Kolek. Ooh, Kolek can reach this. Wait, can he reach the caravan? No, he can't reach the caravan. <laughs> All right, Kolek, you're going to head to Blood Peak then. And Rend, please be replaced by Grimgor. Please tell me Grimgor is alive. All right, we're going to auto-resolve this and get the bonus. Just got to remember to sack it. We won't be able to take it immediately, but we can just do that next turn. Uh, mm, I wonder if this guy will move to Firemouth immediately after. It would be annoying if he did. We could... Uh, wait, Arcan, you can't reach Rend, can you? What's said Blood Peak? They do have some defenders. Ah, oh, but we gotta get the Chronicler to... Nah, fine, just, 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 just go here. And just do it. Wait, could you have reached this? Huh. Not so sure anymore. Uh, go right here anyway, and we'll see. Kukar wouldn't have been able to reach it outside of a March Dance anyway. Anyway, I'll resolve this real quick. We don't need to fight that. Though it will hurt us, but don't it always. Uh, sack that, and I probably should have put the... Huh, leadership reduction, further leadership reduction, and some items. And there we go, 2400 gold for that little effort. Archaeon, you can in fact reach it. Oh, like you cannot. So Archaeon, we're going to have you occupy... Wait. Ah, you can't reach a caravan? <laughs> Whose caravan is this, by the way? Uh, Northern Provinces, who are currently at war with Zatan and Eshin. Hmm. I wonder, what if... And just, just, just hear me out here. And what if we go here, occupy this, like so. Can caravans run? The answer is I don't know, but we might be able to attack them. I'm not sure... But I feel like if we have the opportunity, we should probably take it. Uh, go here. And then, Kuhar. I guess you're just gonna ignore Firemath. Ooh. It's unlikely, I would say, that this guy can reach it. Uh, you can't reach it either, right? The caravan, I mean, no. But you can possibly reinforce it for a big ol' auto resolve. Plus, you have to transfer to Archaeon from Archaeon. And those warriors of chaos. Chaos Warriors of Corn, specifically. We're all Warriors of Chaos. Alright, take the Cornate. And then allow the Chronicler into your army. Now you finally have a mage other than yourself. Although, frankly, Arcan's been doing pretty good. Mage in his way through things. So, uh, hardly a complaint. Anyway, uh, caravan of these guys. We're going to talk to the war host of Jar. And then we're going to join your war against the Northern Provinces for 4.1 money, which isn't much, but it is money. And we will take it. Like so. Oh, thank you, thank you. I need every, uh, every little bit of favor we can get for all of our fancy armies. Can we attack this? Yes, we can. And you know what? We're going to be fighting plenty of Cathians, so I don't really see the need to not auto-resolve this. So we're gonna. And we're going to take the Sacrifice Captives. 
All right, path the glory unlocked for the Chronicler. That was fast on your first battle, too. And well done, sir. And this gives you cooldown and wins of magic cost reduction. What do you have again? Ooh, your scouting increases magic item drop chance by 15%. That ain't bad. And you get the penumbral pendulum. Damn. I'm going to have to do some real thinking about whether we actually pop you to be a Zinch Lord, Zinch and Cast. In fact, you guys let me know what you think. My thought was Archeon already has a decent amount of this stuff from the Lore of Fire, though sadly he gets the Purple Sun uh, rather than... Uh, uh, rather than... Uh, what's it called? Not Firestorm, although Firestorm is pretty decent as well. At least it's better than Burning Sun as far as Vortexes would go, but I wanted the Bombardment spell. The... Fire Bombardment spell. Not Burning Head. I want to say Burning Heads, like little uh, Burning Heads. Raining from the sky. Bolts of Burning. Piercing Bolts of Burning. Is that it? And the Bombardment spell is what I was getting at. And we got Transmutation of Lead, which isn't a bad spell. It's a little bit expensive for what it does, but at 50, uh, 50 duration. But I probably would have preferred Final Transmutation, though I suppose Transmutation of Lead is certainly usable for Archaon's Chosen and his aspiring champions and knights and whatnot once they're in melee. But anyway, I do have a tendency to digress, so I will, well, not shut up, but I'll stop talking about the spells. Anyway, a Blood Peak, how long would, how much would it cost to repair you? 1596. I hope that you guys are willing to take it for free next turn. In fact, you're willing to pay us money for it. Well, ain't that lovely. And we'll deal with that later. Uh, in the meantime, everybody else needs to move. Zazel, you're gonna summon two more irregular marauders. And... yeah, he's going for the altar of the Crimson Harvest. Well, summon two more marauders. So let's send you to grab this island real quick, just to get you a little bit of money, a little bit of XP. A little bit of anything you can get. Close victory. Casualties medium. You know, this might be fun to fight. And there's a unit of uh, Thomas Jackson here. <laughs> of Death Guard with the dual axes, which are certainly going to be a concern. And the odd result might actually be lying in our favor in this particular case. So, yeah, small battle. Here we go. Alrighty, Azazel. Uh, it seems that he looks pretty happy about finally being able to get a battle where he leads by himself, and this will be his first. We're facing off against uh, the enemy vampires here, and considering that it'll probably be fairly rare for us to fight vampires, then we should probably enjoy this. Now we are approaching down the center of the uh, uh, center of the map. Fortunately, this small hill blocked our army's advance all the way up to here, as in the enemy could and see us and now that they do we're going to head directly into the combat we're going to make sure to send the spawn of nurgle to try to deal with those depth guard with dual axes because well they're frightening and the spawn can out regenerate them and at the same time and not uh, or do decent amounts of armor piercing damage azazel in the meantime will land in the back lines flying over the enemy uh, uh, lord and going directly for the enemy artillery and by the looks of it, I'm doing fairly well at destroying them as well. It's going to take him a little bit of time, though, since that's probably not what he's meant for, but not to worry, the rest of our force has engaged. Marauders of Solanish moving on in to fight against some uh, deckhands and mobs and some hand cannons as well. Regular Marauders are in, and their spawn of Nurgle are facing off against those Depth Guard with dual axes. Certainly needed that rock, paper, scissoring unless they kill off a decent pile of all of our marauders. Otherwise, it's just marauders versus zombies all over the place with a little bit of help from the other any unit of spawn. We should have a fairly decent time at working on those marauders. Also, over on this rightmost flank, we managed to get our marauders of Slaughter specifically around uh, the enemy flanks and hit the back of these three units, which are now trapped in between spawn and marauders. 
We should be able to work their way through towards the center of the zombies, especially with a little help from that lash of slanesh uh, from Azazel. And Azazel has by and large destroyed the enemy artillery, not the crew, but the artillery pieces themselves, and he can now just let uh, the crew crumble while he goes after, finally, uh, the enemy lord. Depth Guard are in very bad shape as well as the KO spawn have been taken care of him. Azazel returns to the fray, landing right in that pile of units, sending them all flying, and and going after and the enemy lord. And now these two will be locked in combat if Azazel just, just killed the zombies. <laughs> uh, Alright, and a little bit more of that Lush Slanish and some of those flying animations. A little bit difficult to uh, keep track of him uh, as he does it. Ooh, a nice uh, swing of that sword there as well. The enemy lord is also casting Tide Co. And still has decent amounts of HP that we'll have to work through, but the battle is certainly going our way at about 90% and balance of power. Looks like the Depth Guard are pretty much dead, the Marauders of Slanish obviously winning against the enemy zombies here, though their armor piercing is a little bit wasted on the Deckhands mobs rather than anything else. Uh, the rightmost flank where we were able to hit the enemy in the back with our Marauders of Slanish is completely collapsed, and the rest of our Marauders are moving in to reinforce. And now it's just a matter of allowing the enemy army to crumble away. Anime Lord falls before Azazel, and with a few more zombies, the battle will be ours. All right. Perfect. Uh, decisive victory, easy enough. Certainly took a tiny bit of damage, but nothing all, nothing concerning, uh, let's say. And Azazel probably enjoyed his time at play. We'll get him plenty more as we start building up our first Slaneshi army. Alright, very nice. Our new lords is starting to do things, and Azazel doing pretty good for his, I suppose this was his real debut, as it was a battle that he led without uh, uh, Gulator babysitting him. And 24, nearly 25,000 damage, especially rounded up, uh, was the better, or better than uh, we expected. Lots of spamming of, of, the, uh, uh, of the Lash of Slanish, which is fast to activate. And worked out quite well. The Marauders did okay. One of our KO spawn and did a, got a lot more kills and did a lot more damage, but this is deceptive. As you can see, the damage is gold value dealt, and by the spawn of Nurgle is actually much higher, despite having less half the less, less than half the damage and less than half the kills, as they were the ones that brought down uh, the Thomas Jackson or Thomas Jackson uh, Depth Guard with twin axes, which would have made mincemeat of our Marauders otherwise. So good job to the spawn of Nurgle. You're here for a good time not a long time let's sacrifice those captives more souls and more money and let's see what kind of reward we get from the island Ooh, campaign movement range now ooh, i'm gonna have to take this from you and give it to archaeon and we got 8k all right not bad I'm almost tempted to send him back to the tower of crack briefly though let's see bay of blades mm, we could try to land at the bay of blades and then move him to Nalfari Plain and ignore all this instead. He probably... Actually, he probably would be able to take Doomkeep. There's, like, no defenders there. Yeah, all right, that's what we're doing. Uh, you're going to land at the Bay of Blades, where by virtue of it being quite slaneshy, we can hopefully recruit some stuff. And this way he can start to act on his own. Just going to have to continue and watch in that cash flow. Uh, well, Frick, assuming that you're going to attack the Ultra of the Crimson Harvest, do we want to summon a Temp Lord here? And there's a Brass Collar of Corn Lord. But if we summon a Temp Lord, it'll have to be probably a Mage. Hmm. Tempted to say a Death Mage. Why a Death Mage? Because the tough units here are going to be Wolfric and his Mammoths, and casting Spirit Leech for this one particular case would probably be of higher value to us than repeatedly using... Uh, uh, then repeatedly using a lore of metal searing dooms, which is generally the lord you want for defenses. But nonetheless, oh, 2.4k. It's expensive. I can always bring him back for some purpose later, but I think it's necessary. I'd really rather not have to come back here, so. 
Yeah. All right, Diabolic Splendor. It really doesn't matter if we end up devoting you to something, so... Chaos Sorcerer Lord right in there, and let's get you a point in Spirit Leech. Though Dominating Presence might have been nice as well. And Gulatory going to briefly go into Summoning Stance and take Pack Ice Bay for us. With a quick little auto resolve, as the defenders here are basically non-existent, we will not gift it to Vassal because they don't exist, and we will occupy it instead. And A, hey, perfect, uh, perfect vigor in campaign movement range for you, sir. That's what I like to see. Exploit Vassals to increase the campaign movement range of everybody here further. Let's hope Wolfric doesn't go for Longship Graveyard instead, as that might be annoying. Next up, what do we want to do? We do want to get Kukar bloodied or a, a Cornate uh, Exalted Hero, but I think at the current cost, we may have to wait on that one. Nobody wants to do anything here. I don't think that there's a Rebellion incoming, though we do have to watch it. I did want to potentially trade Norden to Festus, though. So let's see what we can get from him for it. Yeah, we could vassalize him, but we need to confederate him, not vassalize him. So that doesn't really work for us. And if he wastes all his money on things like Norden... Hmm. Can we get him to declare war on anybody? Uh, declare war on the world walkers? They're probably not going to attack you. Hmm. I'm just wondering who we could force him to declare war on to become weaker so that they do some of our work for us so that we don't have to deal with him too much. We could try to declare war on Vlad and then do that. Hmm, wait. A moment. Oh, we can build something in Mordheim. But nothing all that good. Well, it causes fear against Wood Elves. Not horrible. But also not great. You. You're only at war with Kislev at the current time. If we were to give you Norden... Oh, we can't give you Norden. You're not... It's not actually getting close to Erengrad here. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And it didn't quite work the way I wanted to. All right, fine. Uh, Vlad, you are currently at war with the Golden Order, with whom we are not at war with. We'll talk to the Golden Order. Gelt will join your war against Vlad. For money. Like so. I know, I keep making deals with Gelt, but this is... This is... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of on brand. Well, semi-on brand. He, he's not devoted to Chaos, guys, no. Uh, Chaos of Unrock and Norden. And I'm not implying anything. A balance of power, yes. Or balance offer. And join war against Vlad. Oh, 48 k that didn't quite work. All right, well, hopefully Vlad will want to peace out. All right, fine, join the world of... I mean, wow, you won't do that either. All right, well, then just take Norden. Damn it, Festus. Uh, well, hopefully it somehow makes you weaker. Alright. I really wish that we could find another way to confederate him without having to go manually through every single one of his settlements. But what can you do? Nature of the game. Uh, let's see about spending a little bit of our cash, specifically to upgrade a few of the money-making buildings. I think perhaps... The 5k ones are a little bit on the too expensive side, but there might be a few of the cheaper ones like you. You can upgrade to the second level, double the amount that you generate. We should, in theory, be building the vassal emissaries everywhere, both for the control and the income from all buildings for adjacent allies, and the campaign movement range. They're also very expensive, and who knows when we end up building a pile of uh, additional units. And then it starts getting crazy expensive again. Oh, right, Blood Peak. Uh, we can transfer you next turn, though. All right, I think that's all the money we'll spend for now, because I still want these guys to get more troops and be ready to go. We have five turns until the Chaos Knights get magical weapons, and then we'll head for that Rusted Branding Iron, and then immediately into Maddening Gifts. In fact, we can go straight on to it. Fifteen turns until Nurgle's available. All right, and good enough, I believe. Let's skip the rest of this and send the turn. Let's see if anybody can reach Firemouth, and let's see if Grimgore recovers or revives. And by the time we get to him, I think that is his last territory, but of course the... Ooh. Clan Mulder. Someone's asking for us to conquer help it, and you know what? That'll be a pretty fun fight, as I think it has some pretty crazy defenses. Might be something for Azazel to do, or Gilator to do, once they've conquered Norska from Wulfric and from Throg. Just gotta pay attention to when we break our alliance. Path to Glory unlocked for Chronicler. Nice. Uh, Archie. Are we gonna attack the ogres with you? You know what, we might. 
Just for some variety. We could fight some ogres and then loop around here, fight some high elves, fight some skaven, and then head through Karazakarak. Maybe up Blackfire Pass through Akendorf and into Blackfire Pass and then destroy Gelt and then head directly for the Empire itself. Uh, from the south, rather uh, than from the northern World's Edge Mountains as I was planning. I wasn't originally planning on sending Arcan through the Mountains of Morn, but it might not be the worst idea. Uh, well, I would love to hear your guys' opinion on the matter. Uh, Arcan, you're going to go right here, close as you can to the Firemouth. Or be there. No, it's Rend. Damn it. At least, does he have another settlement somewhere? No, this is his last settlement. So he died somewhere and he's being completely. Damn it. <laughs> I wanted them to fight. Alright, Kolek, I think. Hmm. Let me just think about this. Might be the time to transfer the Chaos Trolls to Kolek. And then sent him out with uh, with Kukar to do things, like attack the Vale of Titans. Also, Kukar, you can't reach the Vale of Titans, but you can certainly raid it. Just gotta be careful about it be there being a full greasy stack there, but no, there is not. Alright, raid it a little bit, and we'll head you down there. And... huh. Hmm. What if... I mean, we were going to go after Village. What if we head through the Vale of Titans, we'll grab Shang Yang, which, is, which should be here, right? Yes, we'll grab Shang Yang, which I believe is a Dark Fortress, grab Nam Gao, which is also a Dark Fortress, and start a war with Zatan here. Actually, no. I ignore Zatan, head directly to Village to uh, confed him. We'll hopefully have a full stack up by then, but uh, yeah. Uh, Archaon? Yeah, I think that's how we're going to do it. Is there trolls to be found here? Oh, there's dragon ogres to be found here. They're stupidly expensive, but they are here. Hmm. You reduce their upkeep, yes? By 20%. Oh, and you got Lord of the Storm now. Yeah, you're going to take Lord of the Storm. You are definitely... Wait. Oh, okay, for a second I thought taking Lord of the Storm would lock Storm, which is massive amounts of debuff for the army in favor of massive amounts of buffs for Kolek. Not 100% sure on that one, but we'll see. Take Lord of the Storm for the bombardment ability, sir. And we will raise the Dragon Ogres in Archaon's army, because it's cheaper. Also fairly considerably so. So, Archaon, you will no longer be using those trolls. Let's give them to Kolek. And then I might actually transfer them to Kuhar after. Well, once the two travel together for a while, and once we have enough of the other stuff on uh, on Kolek, you can also raise a single dragon ogre. I know, I know, it's stupidly expensive, but this is why I didn't want to spend this massive amount of cash that we had. Uh, yeah, just get the one. Do we get, do we get him another troll? I nah, get him another troll. Screw it. Screw it. I want Kolek's army to be reasonably cap capable reasonably soon as well. Alright, now we're more or less good, and you're going to head to Kuhar later and follow him along. Oh, maybe in that light then we ignore the ogres? Eh, Archaon can take the ogres while the two travel through Cathan territory, that's fine. Alright, let's keep going. Oh, I love having a lot of choice set in t as to where we travel and what we attack. Very appreciative of that fact. Uh, land in the Bay of Blades and move right to the edge of it. Oh, in fact, wait. Go into regular stance and... No, that's not going to work for you. Is this our territory? No. Alright, go right to... The Bay of Blades, where we can still make use of that Slaneshi corruption. And then go for... All the Marauders of Slanish. We're not going to take the Forsaken of Slanish. Uh, we were supposed to transfer the spawn on Urgul, we'll meet up somewhere else. In fact, maybe we'll have... We'll have Valmir... Oh, Valmir! Oh, you're dead, buddy. You're very, very dead. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting you to be as dead as you are here, but dead you are. Uh, Gulator. Hmm, two stacks. Hey, they'll attack next turn. And we could probably hurt them before Gulator moves in. We could keep him in March stance, but there's a decent likelihood that these guys will then... Hmm, what's the best way to do this? I want this fight, and we'll have to react to this. If we're in March stance, it'll be pretty iffy against... ...effectively two stacks. 
We may be better doing full speed and just hoping that these guys don't sally out. Although they will if they... Damn. Well, it's a clever little trap you've set for us, Wolfric. Yeah, but hopefully we can damage your armies. I wonder, in regular stance, would you be able to reach the Altar of the Crimson Harvest again? You might. Alright, I'm gonna risk that you will. And Pack Ice Bay is losing stuff and... Oh, no, you won't. You won't. The only reason we can move so far is because of the extra campaign movement range. Ah, uh, well, a shame. But we'll deal with it. Anyway, you, sir. Marauders of Slanish. I kind of don't want the spawn in this army. I don't want to. I don't want to use spawn everywhere. Although I do like the spawn of Slanish. At the same time, they don't have a region. Uh, we should probably get you chariots. And you get the sibilant slaughter cade and some chaos chariots. This might be a chariot and scourge sort of themed army. Might be the way to go. Could also get more marauders, but for now I think this is fine. We're at minus 2.2k, which, let's face it, is a little bit on the steeper side. Alright. I believe that's all the prep we can do. Oh, I lied. Valmir, can we do anything for you now? Alright, well, sac sacrifice yourself for the greater evil. And I'll skip, skip, skip outpost and diplomacy, and then in the turn, and then we fight. Grimgore still wants to oh, world walkers would actually peace out if they if we wanted to but we're not going to do that they would give us 7.2k to not kill them you know what let's take a look at that they will revive anyway I'm not sure that we care about them living I think about it it's a decent amount of cash that we could potentially use for ourselves and at the same time they will revive at the end of the campaign anyway, or during the endgame scenario. Which is actually... well, it's not, Ah, yes, Grimgore's in. Now we're attacking, we're attacking. I wanted Archaeon versus uh, Grimgore and we're damn well gonna get it. Did they not attack? Huh. Insanity. Pure insanity. And what do we have here? Oh, now we get the recruitment cost reduction? Of course. Uh, hero capacity plus one for Chaos Sorcerers. That's what we're going to pick. Regardless of the usefulness of everything else, yeah. Plus one free capacity. Uh, that's effect. We can only increase our capacity with Dark Fortresses right now, so that's the only useful thing. Anyway, Gulator. I think you have your work cut out for you, sir. Um, but since they didn't attack, we can attack them. You unfortunately cannot reach Wolfie, but you can reach this guy. And Wolfie may move in response? We'll see. Let's find out. Wolfie, are you willing to fight this? You are indeed willing to fight this. Foolishly, though, and what the heck? Oh, but Valmir won't be reinforcing won't be reinforcing you because he's currently under siege. And nonetheless, I think uh, Gulator has this. Go. Alright, it seems like Gulator gave a heck of a speech there, but it was very, very quiet for some reason, and I couldn't hear what the heck he was saying. But anyway, here we go. Uh, Wolfric the Wanderer has, well, not quite arrived, but he is here. He had one chance to take the Dark Citadel, and he failed to do so, so now he will have to face the wrath of Gulator. The Frolicking Bubonicers are going to move in to lead the fray and start poisoning those enemy marauders, while the various Forsaken and Spawn of Nurgle and bring up the rear. Gulator is in the fray as well, fighting. Mage or not, he's a Sorcerer Lord and they're fairly decent in melee. Although we'll have to be careful when he's on his uh, War Shrine of Nurgle. It looks like the enemy main line is being await reinforcements, absolutely overrun. Obviously this is a tiny little army and isn't the actual fight. Mr. Wolfric will be, and that we should kill off everything here. And before Wolfric arrives, to make sure that he arrives on a field littered uh, with his own dead. Anyway, I'm gonna do a little bit of chasing, but we can also speed the rest of this up as we await Wolfric to arrive onto the field, and we can regroup, hopefully, by the time he gets there. And once more, a simple line of Forsaken will do for us. We're gonna back off towards the line, and as soon as Wolfric arrives, we're gonna head both Gilator and his champion 
his exalted hero, who remains extremely slow without his mount, and to go after him. And there we go, Wilfric's on his chariot, fortunately, that certainly works for us, as it won't be nearly as concerning as if he was on his mammoth. And the two manticores, which have been so great at hunting enemy lords and heroes, and single targets generally throughout this campaign, will start working on Wolfric as well. The two enemy mammoths arrive, a feral mammoth and the great Maherd of Bloodfjord, and we'll be sending all of our heroes heroes and lords and single entities to make sure that they get knocked out. They're already fairly hurt and we've popped the uh, Miasma of Pestilence on them, uh, reducing their melee attack and then the lethal poison combined with the regular poison uh, should also be doing a number on their stats. Looks like the first of the enemy mammoths will uh, drop and probably crush a few of our units uh, beneath it. And more of our Forsaken being crushed beneath the bulk of those mammoths, but it is worth it to bring them down. Wolfric has also dropped, and unfortunately I missed it, but we'll see him again and next time. Maybe in a battle where he does a little bit better. And frankly, the chariot exploding animation isn't particularly interesting. Uh, the mammoth fall animation is much, much better. Anyway, over in the background, we have our doggos uh, running around. They're chasing down and destroying various units of marauder horsemen who are pretty darn fragile and by the looks of it aren't standing up to the ministrations of those various uh, pestilential pups. Uh, over here is what remains of the enemy main line. We got a marauder, or no, marauder manticore. Those are unfortunate somewhat similar words and I will probably make that mistake in the future Manticore landing among them but the Forsaken should be able to clear the remnants of these marauders melee and missile alike without too much trouble mm, Forsaken of Nurgle moving in as well and not that the help is particularly needed anymore oh it was very much meant to be we have the blessing of Nurgle you have the blessing of nothing and speaking of, it looks like with that, uh, the battle is ours and Gullator wins once more. Now we are going to have to chase these guys down as best we can, uh, lest we uh, have to fight Wolfric's army again, uh, but we can do that off screen. Alright, the map goes completely haywire, but it uh, looks like we're still okay, as in it doesn't crash. Gullator very much continuing to impress uh, through the course of the campaign, and I guess we can... You know what, even if we're in our own territory, I think we heal up here. There is another stack nearby, and we may want to hit it if we can reach it. Gullator, you can in fact reach it. Um, but they will most likely run a hey, more campaign movement train, Johnny. Actually, we're stacking that quite a bit on Gullator, which I gotta be appreciative of. A hey, Hordred Demon Tamer finally has his uh, Chaos Steed as well. And Gullator, keep buffing up your Forsaken, so it'll start into that Chaos Vanguard, which should, at least hopefully, help you with... Uh with regards to the auto resolves, which haven't been favoring you all that much. A hey, Gifts of Chaos, we don't have oh i think we unlocked a new one and due to the favor we could get the upkeep production for the marauders but at the cost of the replenishment portal glyph is quite nice but i don't think i'm willing to lose casualty replenishment rate or shatterstone so yeah and they're both quite nice and we're not losing them we'll use the other gifts as soon as we actually unlock them and gullator and you sir hordred what was i going through with you i guess we can get plague father's protection it's not a lot of armor, but if we get multiple of these heroes, it'll be more armor. And the spawn and the hounds will certainly use it, or will be able to. Speaking of the hounds, putrid plague pups. Bubonic howlers. And, oh, of course, hounds of pestle. Ah. <laughs> I was already calling them Hounds of Pestilence in great, great confusion, so I hate you. Anyway, uh, attack this real quick. And he's gonna run, but will he run far enough? Because Valmir can still reach him, so the question is, can Gullator in March stance? Yes, in March stance, um, but it might warrant a fight lest we get so badly hurt that we'll have to recover. Azazel? Hmm. 
Wait, are you still in the Sanashi territory? You're in Searle encampment, which is part of it. Oh, I should have known that. You can't reach the enemy territory. Can you raid in the enemy territory? Yes. So, do we have any more Slaneshi Marauders here? Alas, we do not. But the Marauders we have should be sufficient to take Nalfari Plain, which you really can't reach. Apparently not. All right, fine. We can go here, raid it a little, a little bit, then head to Nalfari. Hopefully, whoa, 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 don't get so close to it that Hama Thane Frost takes it from us, because they're at war with them as well. As that would be annoying. Don't just screw us on this sorrow. All right. Uh, looks like we're wrecking Wolfric right now. It's going fairly well. Alas, though. Okay, you attack Hober here. I think we're going to have to fight this because we're in, yeah, Pyrrhic victory and medium casualties. The vigor loss is really hurtful for these guys. We'll save Grimgor versus Archeon for next episode, as that'll be a long actual siege battle. And this one we can do real quick right now for a fourth battle this episode. I should shut up. Go. Alrighty, uh, where'd you go, Valmir? Valmir? Where are you, buddy? <laughs> oh, lost sight of him there. Anyway, here we go. I like that, uh, like that purple glow. Certainly different from the ones uh, that we've been seeing so far. Though Valmir's only a temp lord, so we probably won't be seeing him for too much longer. This is most definitely Gilator's show, and it'll be probably a more difficult fight than that against Wolfric. Uh, this being round two, but that vigor loss is very, very impactful in SFO as. I've said many a time, and we'll probably see it in action here. On top of that, the enemy holds a choke point, which is, well, probably in their favor in this particular situation, as we won't be able to get copious warhounds around them, unless the gambit pays off. Rather than attacking both sides of the choke point, we're going to divert all of our forces to one side, including the doggos, in the hopes, and by the looks of it, it's working, of forcing the entire enemy army to defend this choke point as well. We're even going to wait for them to get here. As soon as they do, we'll send our main force to run uh, towards them up the choke while all the doggos peel away and go through the other choke and get ready to hit enemy doggos and enemy range units in the back. Alrighty, away we go. Also have our steed on our exalted hero of Nurgle now so these two can fight together while the Forsaken and stuff run around them. There we go, looking like commanders now. And in we go. Looks like the vanguard of the enemy Norskin Warhounds will move in, but we can run past most of them and get the Forsaken and the spawn of Nurgle into combat. Gotta enjoy the spawn in their current form for a little bit longer, and as soon as we can. And they will all be Nurglite spawn, and they will all glow green. All right, and a miasma of pestilence comes down to reduce the enemy melee attack pretty darn severely here, allowing the Forsaken to lay into the enemy without hopefully suffering too much damage in reprisal. Somewhere, Gulator is hunting the enemy lord in the press of the uh, in the press of all of this combat, and we're also waiting for the enemy to blob up to oh. Well, we cast the Army Bound ability, which actually got one, two, three kills. Not too bad. Waiting for the enemy to blob up to cast a few more spells from Gulator, though by the looks of it, it's already going fairly well, and it might not even be needed. The enemy Marauder Champion is trying to rush on out of there. And while the enemy continue to fight, they are being absolutely overrun. The enemy range units are being distracted by our two manticores, who have once again and been absolute stars. Over on this side, we've destroyed a unit of warhounds, and our other warhounds have moved their way in to stop uh, the other unit of marauder hunters with the javelins from firing. I'm getting some air while they do. Good job, doggos. Every one of you is the best boy. All right, now we press the enemy army together, but it won't matter for too much longer as the Berserkers appear to be the only ones who are continuing to fight, and even that probably won't be for much longer. Their Berserk which is a word, uh, is, uh, pales in comparison, let's say, to the Berserkness of the near-mindless Forsaken. 
And there we are. With that, those Berserkers will shatter before the fury of the Forsaken. And they probably weren't too happy about the Doggos hitting them in the back as well. And the battle will be ours, and Gulator will win again. Alright, very nice, very nice, and Gulator pulls it off once more. Didn't get as much playtime for the pups uh, this in particular battle, though it looks like the Putrid Plague pups took the uh, damage, as in the most damage, the prize, took the prize, there we go. And one of the units of Forsaken, 73 kills and 12k damage, and not too bad either. At the end of the day, the enemy failed to hold the choke point, and Gulator is victorious once once more, though, Valmir here has decided to take some of the credit. Sacrifice the captives, as it is pointless to heal the other army. And continue moving northward. If Zazel takes Nalfari Plain and Doomkeep, we can take the Monolith of Bjorkil Bloody Hand with these two. And probably send Valmir around to pick up the... Uh, uh, pick up the other spawn of Nurgle from Zazel. And go in quite well here. Also, you do not need that potion of strength. We can give that to somebody like Kolek, just for hilarity purposes. Uh, though, obviously, eventually he'll want a potion of healing. Also... Bellacor is in sight as well, and we should probably go over there and confederate him. And once we're done with Norsk, I guess we'll send Golator up to grab Sigvald, who should be here. And if he's going to Sigvald, he may as well see if he can't, uh, uh, he can't confederate Valky as well. I might send Azazel back southward to go for the Fekin Knights, and oh, we still have to turn on Throg as well, but there may be more armies by that time. Anyway, with that, we are out of time. Twas Gulator's day, and he certainly uh, showed off. We will need names for Spawn and Forsaken in his army as soon as he, uh, uh, he acquires the technology to upgrade them to the Nurglite version, so... Uh, Give up those names if you got them. Otherwise, we'll start off next episode with an attack on Grimgor's last fortress at Karakazorn and have Archaon face off against uh, against a one true git. Stay tuned for more Archaon. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, especially to Threshold for the hour. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.